Hello and welcome to Samuel Ramey Behind the Curtain, where we'll be hearing anecdotes about Samuel Ramey's life and career off stage or behind the curtain. I hope you enjoy this series. Since we're talking about your days at City Opera, can you tell me a little about what it was like to work with Julius Rudell? Well, uh, Maestro Rudell was, uh, when I first started, he, he was he was a very intimidating uh, presence, you know, sort of. <laughs> I mean, you'd see him and you'd say, oh my, that's Maestro Rudell. <laughs> and um, it, always took a, it always took a while for for sort of the the ice to melt and and when he became a little bit more less standoffish shall we say but um i worked with him you know a lot in those early years uh, he actually conducted my my debut he was conducting the carmens when i did my debut and um and then in, uh, over the next few years i did a lot of mostly um mostly small roles um but he he was um, involved in a lot of those, um, and uh, then eventually, um, uh, I I was offered my I remember my first um, my first Don Giovanni performances, um, and I got to I work with him because he can he conducted most of the almost always did the Mozart uh, operas <coughs> at City Opera. So I got, I remember, I can remember going into his, his office and just working on recitatives and uh, at his piano and he played the piano. And uh, so, you know, uh, over the next couple of, couple of years, I got to know Julius really well and um, started in the company also started to, started me doing, I think, well, uh, it started happening, I think, in the the fall of um, <clears throat> 1973, uh, yeah, that was my that was my second set my second season. And I was doing mostly small parts, but I was covering um, I was covering Don Basilio in uh, Barbara of Seville, and uh, so it came to. Up, we're coming up to the last performance of the season of the barber of which I was covering and uh, I got a call saying that I don't remember who was singing Basilio at that when I was covering it but the person whoever it was was had canceled the last performance for some reason or another so I was going to do that performance so I fortunately I got quite a bit of notice and uh, so I had I had a bit of rehearsal and everything and I was you know I was ready and uh, so I think that's what made that performance was, it was very successful and um, that performance uh, s sort of made that City Opera realize that I was ready for s some larger r roles. Yeah there's a funny story about that about that one performance of uh, Basilio in the Barber that I did um, Armin, of course, came to my performance, and uh, and Matthew was there as well, and uh, so. But at, after the performance, there came back this this little lady, you know, to wanted my autograph, and I remember Armin coming over to me and saying, "Sam, well, Sam, you've made it because Lois Lois Kirschenbaum has come back to ask for your autograph, so you're you're on your way." <laughs> Lois Kirschenbaum is a very dear, great opera fan. Comes to came to all performances and would always come backstage. And she, she was a, a a real presence. And everybody loved Lois. <laughs> so obviously, your Basilio made a big impression. Yes, I think you know they they started. Um, the, I started the the next season. Then they gave me more Basilios and I did, I think they gave me a Colline and La Boheme, you know, which is, a, you know, it's a, not a huge part, but it's a nice part. And, um, and then they offered me, I think for the fall of 1974, um, they offered me, uh, they brought back 
their uh, Faust production. Um, so they offered me Mephistopheles and Faust. Uh, they also offered me my first uh, uh, Don Giovanni's uh, and On the Bolena, which was in the repertoire uh, already. And I was had been doing the smaller part of uh, Anne Boleyn's brother Rochefort. Um, now they offered me um, uh, the, the role of Henry VIII, which is a fantastic role. So yes, during a, during a rehearsal of uh, something, I don't remember what, Julius uh, took me aside one, one day and, uh, and said, uh, said to me, uh, well, you've, you've uh, done a lot of large roles this season and uh, had done very well, that had very good successes with all of them. So we're thinking of that we would like to uh, revive our production of Mephistophele and we were wondering if you would want to be interested in doing it. So I said, of course. Because <laughs> Armin and I had talked, had talked, had conversations about it uh, during this time as well. You know, Armin, I remember one lesson said to me, if they ever talk to you about Mephistophele, you should do it. You should do it. <laughs> the Boito. The Boito Mephistophele. And this was a famous production at City Opera. Oh yes, it was a, a. I had seen the production many times with, with uh, it was it was created for Norman Tregel, who was the big star base at New York City Opera for many years, and um, <clears throat> so um, I had I had seen it with him several times over the years, and uh, I I remember thinking, boy, it'd be great to do this do this someday. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so Julius um, said that they were planning to bring back the Mephistophele and, and that they were thinking that it would probably be done in the spring of 1977. So it was two, two, two and a half years down the road, um, which, was, which was perfect. And uh, so spring of 1977, I had my eyes on that date. <laughs> and you had some big shoes to fill. Very big shoes, you know, Norman Trigel shoes. How did you make this role your own? Well, fortunately, um, um, the original director, who was Tito Capobianco, um, had, did not, he did not come to do for the revival. Uh, so it was a, um, it was a, one of our, one of the uh, house uh, directors. He, he adapted it to me very well, I thought, and I, and I, I think that, you know, in the, in the fabulous production that it was, that I, that I over the over time, made the production seem like it was mine. <laughs> and people remember that. People do. You worked with Julius in other venues besides City Opera over your long and distinguished career. <laughs> Yes, um, I can remember, uh, actually, I can remember some performances of uh, Anna Bolena, which were done uh, uh, with the Philadelphia, I believe it was the Philadelphia Grand Opera or the Philadelphia Opera, one of the Philadelphia Opera Companies. Uh, I sang that with, uh, with Renata Scotto as Bolena and Suzanne Marcy and I came, came from City Opera, we had done that together at City Opera, and so we did that in, uh, in Philadelphia. And uh, I can remember uh, uh, some years before doing um, a Verdi Requiem at uh, Wolf Trap um, with, with Maestro Odell, and uh, also another time, uh, Verdi Requiem, when, um, when Maestro had the, the Buffalo Philharmonic uh, in upstate New York, uh, that, uh, did, did the Verdi Requiem with him there. And we did concerts, uh, some years later, I had been uh, offered to do a concert with, um, an orchestra in New York and I had to choose a program. And, um, uh, Matthew had the suggestion, came up with the suggestion, well, why don't you do a program of all the arias from all of your devil operas, you know, Faust, Mephistophele, The Rake's Progress, um, Damnation of Faust, 
There are all these all these arias you could have, and and you could even call it a date with the devil. So um, so that was programmed, and um, my Rudell conduct uh, conducted that that with me, and then uh, I did I did the the program of date with the devil program in a number of venues, and um, my Rudell and I did it together in uh, Santander in Spain. Um, and then uh, also um, there was a, a recording in the offerings of it, which we did uh, in Munich, and that involved also a performance. Um, so um, yeah, Julius and I became, you know, <laughs> partners. <laughs> I found him to be a very charming gentleman. He was, yes, he could, he could be very charming when you got to know him. <laughs> <laughs> so you had very fond memories of Julius Rudell. Yes, many, many fond memories. Uh, and, uh, and actually, we uh, just uh, less than a week ago uh, celebrated uh, the 100th anniversary of his birth. On March 6th. He was... Fantastic. One of the top conductors. Yep. A couple of other conductors that uh, you can tell us about in another segment. Uh, Maestro Muti and Maestro Abado. Oh, the two Italian lions. Yeah. yeah. So we'll <laughs> talk about them another time. Great. Great. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hey, look at that, that's coming on. Hey, look at that, that's coming on. Hey, look at that, that's coming on.